Thank you for your kind introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for inviting me to the uh, G1 Global Conference 2011. It is an honor for me to have this opportunity to speak about the bus uh, Japan, and I'd like to share some practice at Nissan, which I believe the contribute to this very important topics. The global market today require us to compete differently from our past uh, experience. The start small with good technology and high quality and gradually grow globally has always been success pattern for Japanese companies. However, this is not enough to catch up the current speed of emerging countries. We need to take advantage of these challenges and turn them into growth opportunity. We cannot be afraid of taking risk or going on the offensive. I believe the four most important keywords in the auto industry today are emerging countries, compact and low prices, price cards, green technology, and diverse talent management. I'd like to talk about how Nissan addresses each of these to compete in today's global market. At the end of my presentation, I'd like to share with you my thought on how Nissan is contributing to maintain the competitiveness of Japan auto industry in the business environment today. Emerging markets are growing much faster than our forecast. Now, almost 35% of global auto production and sales are come from BRIC countries. In China, Nissan established a 50-50 joint venture with Tong Fong Motor in 2003. We invested 120 billion yen in cash and gained stake in the state-owned company. People said it was bold investment. Not only did we invest, but we delegated many management positions to local Chinese employees in order to utilize local talent for the rapid growth market. So you can see this slide. Nissan is now selling more than one million units in China. This is the largest sales volume for Nissan. In 2010, in India, where we have very little business foundation, just two years ago, almost zero, we invested 90 billion yen and built a plant with the capacity to produce 200,000 units. It was bold strategy, but our plant is now full capacity. With regard to light commercial vehicle, we have been collaborating very closely with our local partner, Ashok Leyland. In Russia, we built our own production plant in St. Petersburg in 2009. We are also working to expand our business through our local partner, Aftobus. In Brazil, we just announced $1.5 billion investment to build a new 200,000 unit plant close to Rio de Janeiro. This literally is the last brick in the wall and defined a new era for Nissan in Brazil. Nissan's strategy in emerging countries can be summarized in, into three elements. One is a clear prioritization of resources allocation, resource allocation. We invested in China 2003 in India 2008, in Russia 2010, and in Brazil this year. We have continued to invest significant resources into emerging market to ensure we can capitalize on growth opportunity. The second element is collaboration with local partners. We have been working effectively with Tongfong Motor China, Ashok Leran India, and Aftobas in Russia. Collaboration continues to be a key element for Nissan in all part of business including emerging market. The third element is utilizing local talent. 72% of global management position, executive positions at Nissan today consist on non-Japanese or local talent. This trend will continue for Nissan as it is what makes us strong. And because of this strategy, emerging market account more than 50% of Nissan global sales. Let me, on the next keyword, our strategy for compact car and low price vehicle. The, company, uh, the compact car and low price car market are growing everywhere, not only emerging market, but also matured market. 
Today, Nissan's global compact car, the much micro, is produced in Thailand, China, India, and Mexico, and is planned for production in Brazil. As you may know, the much that you see on the street in Japan are produced in Thailand and exported to Japan. Unfortunately, today, that they stopped the production due to the Thailand flood. Meanwhile, the micro you see in Europe and produce in India. The global compact car is based on our V platform. This is very compact, uh, cost competitive platform for us. And we quickly wrapped up its production to offer very affordable product to customers. The V platform products uh, produced in low cost countries for domestic market and export to the high cost countries. Then Japan micro uh, much, uh, Japan import much from Thailand, but an Opama, which is uh, producing much before, is now producing Nissan Leaf, the 100% electric vehicle, that uh, the, this is a shift from low cost car to more advanced technologies car. The next keyword is green technologies. In 2008, Nissan announced our vision of zero emission leadership. Nissan has actually been working to develop lithium-ion battery for electric vehicles since 1982, almost 20 years ago. We launched the Nissan Leaf in 2010 as a result of our engineers' dream, effort, and hard working. In 2008, when Nissan announced the vision to be zero emission leadership, no one ever imagined that EVs would gain such wide acceptance across the world. Internal perception, even inside Nissan, was no exception. But we wanted to be a pioneer, not just for all. So official announcement of this vision was important for us to drive toward the, this goal. This led us to build over 95 partnerships around the world improving positive public opinion of EVs. Nissan Leaf was launched globally in December 10, and first 10 months, we have sold about 8,000 8, units in Japan, 17,000 units in the world. Nissan's green technology are not limited to electric vehicle. We extend our low carbon, low emission, pure drive technologies across the world, wide range of vehicles such as hybrid, green diesel, hydrogen step, and so on. We just announced our mid-term environment plan called Nissan Green Program 2016 to reconfirm our commitment to reduce CO2 emissions. The finally, the last keyword, diverse talent management. The, as I said, it is important to see change as opportunity for growth. Nissan's values the global management to enable the organization to adapt quickly to change and reforms. This differ from typical Japanese corporations uh, that are managed by only Japanese people even throughout its global operations. Global management is defined as management with talented people regardless of nationality and gender. Eliminating the Japanese black box in organization enable companies to find and grow diverse talent. Acceptance of difference in organization allow diverse talent to exhibit the ability. I call this diversity cycle. Every company competing in the global marketplace needs to create their own diversity cycle. Nissan engage in the resource management, talent management, and development of corporate culture on a global basis in order to build a truly global organization and talent pool. This is important not only today's business, but for the future. I touched upon the four key words which are important for Japanese auto industry today. All of these four items need to be addressed to survive in this challenging global economy. I would like to end my presentation by speaking about how Nissan is contributing to maintaining the Japanese auto industry's competitiveness today. The Nissan strategy can be summarized into three points. First, 
we believe that our source of competitiveness lies in Japan. A strong Japanese development production way or monozukuri power is deployed at all our production facilities around the globe, resulting in the company's global competitiveness. I have been consistently emphasizing the necessity of retaining Japanese strengths and monozukuri in Japan. The reason to me is obvious. Retention of monozukuri excellence in Japan results not only business in Japan, but also the growth of the entire global market. This remains unchanged despite the earthquake and tsunami in March. I think the combination between the strong leadership taking risk and uh, sometimes bold strategy and very Japanese steady execution power or execution capability will be the key of the revived Japan. Japanese automakers are forced to further improve cost competitiveness to cope with the strong yen. I strongly believe that this challenge will lead to new breakthrough in monozukuri, which will lead to new growth and global level. This must happen. However, I have very, very strong sense of risk whether Japan can maintain its monozukuri base in Japan in the future. I believe we all need to continue working hard to make sure it is maintained. The second aspect of Nissan's approach is to execute distinctive strategy. In the market, we should communicate on our, on our unique value and brand positions. We are not just followers of our competitors. I think it is important for Japanese company to avoid yoko narabi or followers mentalities, which computer is doing something we should do, such as following the mentality. This is consistent throughout our strategy be it emerging market, compact car, or green technology. We assume risk if necessary. This is why leadership is important. Last but not least, the third aspect is building an organization that is always challenging reform. I personally believe that Japanese companies should seek truly global management with uh, more diverse and bilingual headquarters. Each global function retains a core element remaining in Japan, which its operations are deployed globally, capitalizing its strengths. Diverse talent contribute to the company's performance. Being bilingual is something natural. This is how I describe truly global management. Nissan announced a new mid-term business plan, Nissan Power 88, this June, the auto ambitious plan calls for hitting global market share 8% by 2016 and ensuring the sustainable profit margin 8%. This is challenging, but by maintaining our monozukri foundation, taking calculated risk, and developing truly global management organization, I believe this ambitious plan can be achieved. Thank you for your attention.